Over the last couple of weeks or so, I've been building out the new room and cleaning up and reorganizing the studio. And I came across a bunch of old gear that I haven't actively used in probably 25 years or more. And in fact, the last time I had this stuff hooked up and even turned on was probably 20 years ago when I hooked them up to compare to my reverb plugins that I was using back then because those things sounded so terrible. I just wanted to confirm what I was hearing. So I hooked up my MIDI verb and the Rev 7, and yes, they sounded way better than the reverb plugins I was using back then. Since I had them in the rack again, I hooked them up and compared them to the reverb plugins that I'm using now. Check it out. The Rev 7 had uh, reverbs and delay effects and some modulation effects in it. They had a lot of hall programs, small hall, vocal plate, and you could do neat stuff with it. Of course, you had what they call their initial delay, which was actually your pre-delay. But they had this other thing, which was kind of neat. They had this thing called first level. You know, you could mess around with this and you would get this extra little delay in there. But my favorite setting in here was number 17, the echo room. Shorten the delay time a little bit here. I use this one all the time really like this one a lot. This is the MIDI Verb 2. When it came out, which was probably the mid 80s or early 90s, it was considered pretty cheap back then. But hey, for a guy like me back then, I wasn't making much money. I had my home studio. I needed more reverb, something for the snare drum or maybe a keyboard or background vocals. This fit the bill. There's no adjustment on it. It's all presets. So you would have your reverbs, one through 10. So let's, it's basically, they just get bigger. So let's go to 10, 20. I think the 30s are gated reverbs. Then you get into the 40s and you get reverse reverbs. And then when you get into the 50s and 60s, you get some flanging. I think the 60s were chorusing. Yeah, so the 60s are chorusing, and I'm, you know, listening to it now, it's like there's a nice spread on some of that stuff. Nice stereo. But anyway, let's go back to some um, kind of longer reverbs and do a comparison here. Oh, and I should add that this song is called I Will. It's a song I did with my friend Zach Hooper. Zach used to be the lead singer of a band called Cloud 10 back in the day. Yeah, I want you every day and every night The candlelight dinners and the pillow fights Yeah, there's nothing I'd ever choose Oh Verb. Always love you and I, I will. Vintage verb. Always love you. They say you don't know what the future may hold, but I do know. I, I will always love you. really like the Rev 7 on the vocals because of the high end, but on here, is this too much high end? So that went on for about two minutes of me talking about the comparisons that I had just done. And it was all cool and interesting, but then this happened. Before I move on, I got this other idea. I want to try out this other um, reverb. I hadn't used this one in a really long time. So this is my Alesis Wedge. I got this in the late 90s and did a lot of records with this. I actually did a lot of my first Little John stuff using this on vocals. I have this sticker on here that says the X42 Y45 device because at the time I was so embarrassed that I was using this even though I like the sound of it. It's, it's what I could afford. I liked it. I thought it sounded pretty cool. I just didn't want anybody to know I was using the Alesis unit. These units came out in 1994. I got one, I think, in the 97. There's a lot of cool things about this unit. It's got a lot of different sounds. Of course, it's got reverbs. It's got these small rooms, chambers, plates. 
You keep rolling up, it gets into like nonlinear stuff. It's got some flange and chorus. Once you start really getting into it, it starts combining different types of reverbs together or delays in reverbs and things like that. Being that it was kind of a less expensive reverb, the tail of the reverb wasn't really super smooth. It always just kind of sounded a little grainy and cut off, but I like that because it would just kind of get out of the way. Another thing that was really cool about this reverb is that it had this audition button right here so that if you just wanted to try out reverbs, just hit that right I thought that was really cool and it would speed things up hearing it again reminded me how much I absolutely love this reverb for vocals but also the way it sounded it made me realize that I think I've been approaching the reverb on these vocals the wrong way that I should be using longer reverb so I went back and reset all the other reverbs to kind of compete with this one and see which would be best for the song. So now I'll show you what I came up with. I wake up in the middle of the night See you laying there by my side And I think God, what did I do to deserve you? Cause I've seen a picture perfect sunrise There's more beauty held in your eyes I think God, what did I do to deserve you? Oh, baby, I, I will always love you and I, I will always love you. They say you don't know what the future Like, I'm still leaning towards the Elisis wedge. It's kind of hard to say, you know, technically exactly the reason why. It just sounds like he's in a room, like some sort of kind of room or space. I can almost see it in my head. And there's something about the way the pre-delay is throwing it off. It's almost like the sound is kind of behind me a little bit. I do like this EOS reverb a lot. I think it's awesome. It's gonna be a contender. The Valhalla Vintage Verb is really cool, not necessarily exciting or that interesting. The Rev 7 obviously has a ton of high end in it and it's cool on some things, but for lead vocals where you've got a lot of S's and T's, you really hear that. And it's also doing this thing that could be cool in some situations, but I didn't like it here where you hear things from the left and then from the right, almost, almost like the person's moving around the room a little bit, which is kind of cool, but I found a little distracting. And the MIDI verb too, it's all right. I just can't get much control out of it because you just got these presets here. So it's gonna be a toss up between the wedge and the EOS plugin. For comparing reverbs on the snare drum, I'm only gonna be comparing against one plugin, and that's my Altiverb plugin. I've got a setting on there that I use all the time, and I, I think it's perfect. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna show it to you because it's something that I've developed over time, and it's kind of a secret, so there's some things I do gotta keep secret, but I will be comparing it to three of my outboard reverbs. Let me show you what I did with those. On the MIDI verb, there weren't a whole lot of choices. I ended up going with preset 16, which is one of their shorter reverbs. On the Rev 7, I ended up going with this room sound. It's like a room reverb for snare drum. I did shorten the time just a little bit here. And then because it's so bright, I brought down the, uh, the high dampener just a little bit. And then over here, on my Lisus Wedge, I ended up going with number 11, which is their Cedar Room, which sounded really, really great. The only real change I did to it was I shortened the reverb time a little bit, and I also brought down the high dampener just a touch. Here's the drums dry. Here it is with the ulti verb. Rev 7. Cool. Let's go back to the alti verb. Wedge. 
from seven. Yeah, I don't like that. Midi verb. All right, now let's hear him in the mix. Multi verb. Verb seven. Wedge. Midi verb. Back to the multi verb. Okay, so that is kind of interesting. Like when I'm soloing up the drums, I really like the alti verb and I, I like the wedge. Midi verb twos, kind of boring. I hated the Rev 7 when the drums were soloed, but when I put the music in, that high end that's still kind of ringing out, that's kind of cool, man. I don't know. Now it's got me thinking that I'm going to have to go back and re-examine this thing because there was something about having that high end ring out that kind of gave it um, a kind of energy that I really liked. That's not what I expected. All right, now for the next experiment. This is my mic mix spring reverb. I got this sometime in the early 80s. It's not a very good reverb. It's just mono, it's just one channel, but it's all I had at the time, so I made it work. It's definitely got a vibe, even if it kind of sucks, but I thought I'd try it out on some vocals. Let's check it out. I'm gonna try this out on a song called Somewhere In Between. It's by the infamous String Dusters from their Rise Sun album, and it was written and sung by Jeremy Garrett, who is their fiddle player. I love this song. The map says my way takes too long But I wanna get there late Well, my friends telling me I'm wrong Originally, when I mixed the album, I had used a vintage verb. I put a little EQ on it, and there is a bit of compression. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on there because I really like that sound. I'll try it with a vocal solo first. Here is what I had with a vintage verb. There's something strange about this place. Just when you think you've seen it all. Spring reverb. Hey, someone's taking up your space. And someone's breaking down your walls. Pretty cool. Let's hear it in the mix. Let's start with the vintage verb again. There's something strange about this place. Just when you think you've seen it all Spring reverb Hey, someone's taking up your space and Someone's breaking down your walls well, if you're lost, That's pretty cool. I like the spring reverb actually. It's kind of interesting. It seems a little thicker further along in the reverb time. My main issue with it right now is that it's just in mono. So it's just kind of up the middle. I'm not really big into mono reverb. So what I did was I recorded it twice and I ended up putting a little bit of delay on one of the sides. I've got 11 milliseconds of delay, that's it. It was like amazingly almost like the other one. It didn't really sound that in stereo. So I went ahead and delayed it. Next time, turn the ringer off. Here we go. There's something strange about this place. Just when you think you've seen it all. Hey, someone's taking up your space.
Amazing. I, I just get caught up in this song, but uh, that was an interesting comparison. <laughs> I love this song. I really used to hate that reverb, but now that I'm listening to it, it's it's not great, but it's cool and it's smooth and it actually it kind of works on this song. I, I really like that, especially recording it twice and panning it apart and put a little delay on it helps out so it's not so mono. I dig that. That's been a surprise. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Remember to subscribe because I found some other gear that I'm going to put in a video. I hope you have a good day and remember, be unique. I think this is the worst sounding reverb delay I've ever heard in my life.